In case there are any of you out there watching who are still thinking, eh, living under ISIS controlled territory, maybe not so bad. I want to dispel that notion today. Uh, and this isn't a ridiculous concern because Westerners still do go out there, but you don't know what kind of hell you'll be moving into. Take a look at just a sampling of some of the fines and fees that ISIS expects you to pay if you live in their territory. First of all, for farmers, this is just one, you can be punished if your sheep wears bells. They will literally take your sheep if it wears a bell. You want a fancy sheep? No sheep for you under ISIS. Uh, they also tax you on every acre of land you have, the crops that you sell, and all of that. For women, you'll be surprised to find out, it's particularly harsh. You can be fined for wearing a cloak that is too tight, $25. Not wearing socks or gloves, $30. I don't know if that's per sock or glove or the combined set. Possessing a pack of cigarettes is $23, which is actually would buy you half a pack of cigarettes in New York City today. Or showing your eyes, which is $10. And if it's $10 and it's in Syria, that's, that's going to sting a little bit. Uh, next, if you're a non-believer living in this area, you can be required to pay for a certificate of repentance if you are a Shiite or a non-Muslim. That could cost anywhere from between $200 to $2,500, and you might have to renew it up to four times each year. Also, former civil servants or police officers who worked for the government before the Islamic State took control are required to have those certificates of repentance as well. Uh, finally, for pretty much everyone trying to live some sort of a modern life, you can be fined for smoking a cigarette, $25, installing a satellite dish, $50, which seems oddly close to the price of the cigarette. They have weird priorities there. To leave the city, you have to pay, of eight, uh, pay a fee of $800, and you can be punished if you do not come back within two weeks by taking all of your property. In Fallujah, for instance, you have to pay $1,000 just to leave the city. But from what I've heard, pay that $1,000 and get the hell out of there if you can. And don't worry about the, the fee because you're never going to go back. And then finally, if you just want to like drive, you can be fined for driving on the wrong side of the road, $25. That one actually makes sense. Don't drive on the wrong side of the road. That seems like a pretty light fee. I think you'd pay more here in America. But aside from that, these fees are an indication of one, that they're doing poorly over there. Not just the people, but ISIS as well. Many of these fees are a lot higher than they were this time last year. Uh, the certificates of repentance, you only had to have those renewed once a year back in the day under ISIS, which is an indication of the fact that their finances are falling apart. So the war effort is apparently doing some damage, if not freeing all of these people from the grip of ISIS. But aside from the effect on them, this is just a small reminder that the daily lives of the people living in those areas are in ways that range from minor inconveniences to just massive disruptions of your ability to live a life. They are living a living hell. And that's my final judgment.